In February 2013, archaeologists, historians, and interested locals began to search for the original Iron Forge, which gave Pigeon Forge its name. Replaced by timber milling and then flour milling, the original site was located under the Old Mill Restaurant. To this day, there remains evidence of ironworking. Old fire scale from decades of hammer blows stuffed into the cracks of the very bedrock. With the site located, the team decided to reignite history with a demonstration of smelting, the extraction of iron from ore deposits found nearby. The process begins with locating and preparing the iron ore. Taken from the earth, it must be broken up and then roasted in a fire, which helps make it easier to crush down to the size required by the furnace. A fire is built, placing pieces of ore in amongst the wood, and is built up big enough to heat the rocks to a glowing red color, after which they are allowed to cool. The ore is crushed with hammers into small pieces and made ready for smelting. This prepared ore is fed into a charcoal burning furnace, and at the end of the day, iron is made. An experimental archaeology team was invited to demonstrate this technique at the Saddle Up Festival in February 2014, and successfully made about 20 pounds of iron. The iron smelting team was made up of Dr. Jesus Hernandez, a physician whose passion for steel led him to leave medicine to forge iron and steel full-time. Mark Green, an avid smelter of iron and maker of fine Japanese sword fittings. Christopher Price, a bladesmith with a passion for the historical metalcraft of Northern Europe and early America. Dennis McAdams, a smith on the path of making blades from his own steel. And Alan Longmire, an archaeologist for the Tennessee Department of Transportation, and in that position, witness to many artifacts from early America and an authority on preserving the legacy of iron production on this continent. Before the iron can be made, the furnace must first be built. Using clay, a five-foot-tall tube was assembled on site and gently warmed with fire before being brought to full heat. The furnace uses only charcoal and air to create temperatures above 2600 degrees Fahrenheit, and our furnace master, Dr. Hernandez, must be patient during this process or else the extreme heat can damage the furnace before the smelt even begins. Once the furnace is operating at full temperature, iron ore and wood charcoal are layered into the clay tube. The extreme heat at the bottom consumes the fuel and creates an unstable chemical environment where oxygen in the ore is reduced by hot carbon monoxide gases created by the burning charcoal, turning them into carbon dioxide as they leave the stack. In this way, the ore is reduced to pure iron, while the other parts of the rock, which is mostly silica, runs off as molten slag. Managing the slag can be critical during these small experimental smelts. In the larger furnaces used 150 years ago, the process could be more easily dealt with, but in a small furnace like this, even a small imbalance can jeopardize the entire system. Using local pigeon forge iron ore, the team found that about half the rock turned into thick, frothy slag, and this kept Dr. Hernandez busy keeping it from building up too much, choking off the air supply, or eating at the clay walls and destroying the furnace before the team was done feeding it. Every few minutes, the ore and charcoal were poured in, creating a layer cake of ingredients, and every few minutes, slag had to be removed from the bottom of the furnace to keep up with the furious appetite of the fire. After a long day of managing the furnace, it was finally time to finish the process. The charcoal was allowed to burn down the length of the tube, 
and sections of the furnace were removed to allow easy access to what was left. Even though the job is almost done, the core of the furnace has to remain as hot as it can get to keep the precious metal at high temperature in the slag liquid so that it can easily be removed and then worked at the hottest temperature it will ever be. The team takes turns with sledgehammers, compacting the fresh iron and knocking off slag, creating a mostly round biscuit of metal. They flatten it and then cut it into smaller pieces for refining into bars of pure metal at a later time. Even though the hardest work is done, the team will have to come back hours later when the furnace site is finally cooled down so they can clean up the mess, share their observations for the day, and start planning for the next journey down History's Lane, where they will work with some new source of ore, add a new process to their steel's refinement, and experiment with the material they've made, creating artifacts that match the chemistry and character of those tools made in the past, which just can't be replicated using modern foundry steel. This passion for historical metalcraft, recreating the past by using ancient methods and techniques, educates us about the world we came out of in ways no book or journal can do. Thank you for joining us.